Well, it's that time of year again. October is here, and that means Halloween is on the way. Perfect time to learn three spooky new licks that should scare your fingers and challenge those chops. Let's check it out. Okay, spooky lick number one is an alternate picking and hybrid picking combination lick that involves a hybrid of a few different scales. You're going to hear Phrygian dominant, you know, E Phrygian dominant in particular. Uh, you're also going to hear the half hold diminished and a tiny little bit of chromaticism in between. So it's really a hodgepodge of different things to give it a kind of spooky, uneven sort of feeling. So it's based primarily on one sequence that goes like this. So this particular part is E Phrygian dominant. Uh, it's going to start on a B on the 4th string 9th fret and we're going to B C D or 9 10 12 and then we're going to jump to the G string and we're going to play two notes. We're going to play E and F. Then we're going back to the D on the on the fourth string, which is our third note. So that's the first six. The next group we go straight up six notes, and that's going to be straight up six notes of the E Phrygian dominant scale. So B C D, and on the G string E F G sharp, and it's that note that makes it dominant. A regular E Phrygian would have a G natural. So it's really the relationship between the G sharp and the D that gives it the dominant moniker. So first six notes, second group of six, and that's basically the template for the next couple of rounds. So part one. Okay, now I'm basically going to mimic the structure of the next lick to be the same as the first one. The notes are going to change though. We're going to start on E on the third string ninth fret. We're going to do E, F, G. So take note, I just mentioned G sharp in the previous portion. Well, when you combine G and G sharp with E and F, you're borrowing from what they call the half whole diminished scale, which is essentially exactly what it sounds like. Half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step. And you're going to see throughout the rest of the lick that some of the other notes from that scale are going to pop up. So here's how it's going to go with the first six notes of this part. So I'm doing E, F, G. On the second string, I'm doing G sharp A. Now, A is not part of the half hold diminished, so you could think of it as part of Phrygian dominant, if you like. But the part that's making it a little bit creepy is the G to G sharp. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit on the loopy side, so. And then I'm gonna go straight up. E, F, G, and then on the second string, G sharp, A, and B. So it's the same structure as this part. We're just mimicking that same form and we're conforming it to a different set of notes. And all together. Especially when you slow it down, it gives it that kind of a you know, ant crawl sort of feel. I should say spider crawl if it's Halloween. A little spookier than ants, anyway. Moving on, we're gonna take the same basic sequence and it's gonna be more of um, a chromatic sort of thing. What I'm really doing is I'm targeting, I'm targeting two notes from the E chord, the B, and the E, and I'm surrounding it with chromatic based stuff. Sometimes it fits in a scale, sometimes it's literally just an outside note, but these two notes are the primary notes I'm targeting, but using our sequence, using the pattern we've just used in the last two bits, 
it would end up like this. In this case, slightly different ending than before. But notice, the notes are so tightly compact that it gives it a very unsettling kind of feeling. So, what's going on there? Notes-wise, this portion is going to start on the 2nd string 11th fret, and that's going to give us a B-flat. We're going to play actually three in a row. We're doing B-flat, B-natural, and then C. To complete the first six of this section, we're going to jump over to the E string. We're going to play D-sharp E, and then back to C on the 2nd string. So you'll end up with this. Cool. To finish this off, we're going to play the initial three again, B flat, B, C. Then we're going to jump to the first string, and we're, instead of doing 11, 12, 13, like you might suspect, this is going to be 11, 12, 11, or D sharp, D, sorry, D sharp, E, D sharp. And the reason for that is the next note of the next section is going to be the F. So I'm kind of reserving the F for the next part. So here's what this part sounds like. And then the last part is going to begin on the F. So up to this point. That brings us to section four, the last part. Here's where the hybrid picking stuff comes in. Uh, playing um, a combination of Phrygian dominant again, at least at the beginning, and the majority of this to the end is going to be the half hole diminished. And it's got a very cool, creepy sort of sound to it, uh, especially when it's phrased the way we're gonna phrase it. We're gonna play, we're descending the scale, but we're ascending the notes in groups of two. So basically what we're doing is we're beginning on the 13th fret F, we're going to hammer the G sharp, then we're going to pick the E, hammer the F. Actually I pulled to the E, come to think of it. So one pluck with your middle finger, hard to tell, but there it is. And you get four notes out of that, so F with the middle finger pluck, hammer G sharp, pull to E, hammer F. Okay, from here we have to go to the next string. So we're gonna play with the pick. We're gonna pick the D on the B string, 15th fret. And then again with the middle finger, we're gonna pluck the E on the first string. So we got. And there's the first six. Kinda of cool in and of itself. Okay, the next six is gonna start on the second string. We're gonna play C sharp D. And that's gonna be a pick, hammer, and then a pull to B, hammer, C sharp. The last two notes of this group of six, we're gonna borrow B flat on the third string, 15th fret, and then we're going back to B natural on the second string, 12th fret. So that group of six is gonna sell my ass. One thing you'll note too when you're practicing this, each group of six is actually a pretty good loop. You could easily just loop this over and over to get the feel for that particular section. So feel free to do that. Okay, the last group of six is gonna begin on, actually it's gonna begin on G sharp on the 13th fret, uh, third string. We're gonna hammer B flat on the 15th fret third string. We're gonna to pull to 12, which is G natural. And then we're gonna hammer, G, yeah, excuse me. We're gonna hammer G sharp again. So there's four of six. The last two notes of this part is gonna be 15th fret F, which we'll use the pick for on the fourth string, 15th fret. Back to G natural, third string, 12th fret. Oops. There we go. And finally, E the root. So the hybrid picking section. And 
that's the whole thing. <laughs> Lick number two is a tapping sequence, uh, fairly reminiscent of Buckethead, I would say. If you're familiar with his stuff, you'll hear these kind of zany, creepy sounds. This is actually, um, I'll call it Buckethead for the poor man, <laughs> because his stuff is a lot more complicated than what this is. Um, what's basically going on there is we're going to have two major arpeggios. We're going to have E major down here at the uh, fourth position. We have B and G sharp, or seven and four. Next string will be five for E, and then fourth fret on the third string for B again. G sharp will come back as fourth string, sixth fret. And seventh fret, fifth string will be another low E. So very common shape, probably played this a million times. Now for the tapping portion, or for the upper portion, we're actually gonna mimic the exact same shape but we're going to do it a flat five away. We're actually going to do a B flat major arpeggio. So it'll be the same form again, but B flat and E are a tritone away. In other words, they're about as far away from each other as they could possibly get within an octave, exactly halfway along. And that produces some pretty creepy sounds if, uh, if I'm telling the truth. So. This involves just one shape in two different areas, but what we're going to do is we're going to play the E stuff with the left hand, and we're going to tap the right hand stuff, and that's going to be the B flat stuff. So basically what we're doing is we're descending groups of three. The first note of three comes from B flat, so it's going to come from the 13th fret with, well, I use my middle finger for the tap. Then I'm going to play two notes from E. So in other words, I'm going to pull the 13 down to the 7. And then I'm going to play the G sharp by pulling the 7 to 4. So the basic idea is one note from B flat, two notes from E. And you drag it all the way through the, the arpeggio sequence. So it looks like this. So you'll notice that I'm tapping all of the notes of the B flat, and my left hand is going to eventually play all of the notes of the E, but we do it in sequence. So if you think of the sequence as being 13 to 10, next string 11, next string 10, next string 12, next string 13, that's the full sequence. So each one of those notes is going to be followed by two notes from E. So it's going to look like this again. One from B flat, two from E. Go to the next one for B flat, two from E. Right. One from B flat, and now we're on the second string. Two from E. One from B flat, and now we're on the third string, 10th fret. For me, all right, one from B flat, two for me. That's half of it right there. So here it is all together. Pretty creepy. Now, what you'll notice is as we go back up things get a little weirder in the sense that we are still keeping the one to two ratio. We're doing one from B flat and we're gonna do two from E. But on the way up, we're gonna to have to hammer from nowhere, as they say, the second note of the E stuff. So make a long story short, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna tap B flat, 13th fret. We're gonna to pull to E, but now we need two notes from E. So what we're gonna do is pull to E, and then with your left hand ring finger, you're going to tap the 6th fret 4th string. So we're coming, we're basically coming right back up the E sequence one at a time. So tap, pull, and then hammer the new string with your ring finger. Okay, now you're going to keep that finger down because the next tap is coming in right about here, 12th fret, 
fourth string on D. That's one for B flat. Now we need two for E. Well, it's going to be one, two. Like that. Same sequence here. We're going to tap ten on the third string. That's one for B flat. One, two for E. Almost done. B flat and second string, eleventh fret. We're going to tap it. Pull to E. And finally, we'll probably just hammer the seventh fret and allow the whole thing to start over. So here's one full round, round trip. Spooky Lick number three is coming at us from a diminished seven perspective. This is going to involve three note per string stretches and string skips along the way as well. Um, part of this will be alternate picked and part of it will be legato. So this will be a good workout for, well, several aspects of your technique. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start on the ninth fret, fourth string on B, and we're going to play B, D at the 12th fret and F at the 15th fret and we're going to mimic that fingering on the second string so there's a string skip but the saving grace for the string skip and the stretch is that it's the same fretting for both strings so that's one tiny saving grace and the sequence is going to be like this So essentially, it's four, no, it's going to be five notes straight up, and then back one. And technically, that's a group of six. I mentioned five notes, which it is, but in terms of the pattern, it's going to be a six note pattern. And essentially, we're doing the same thing in reverse. We're going to start on the highest note, which will be the 15th fret D on the second string. We're coming down five notes. And then we play the second last note again. Or think of it as five down and back one. One, two, three, four, five, back one, which is our sixth note. So group of six on the way up, six on the way down. Gives us this. Great little picking exercise right there for sure. Make sure that you try not to over tense the left hand. It's going to get tense because you are stretching, but shake it out when you need to and, and try to maintain as light of a touch as you can. That's going to help you get through this without, uh, you know, tendons popping and stuff like that. <laughs> so once we're done the picking portion, the second portion of this is the tap or the legato. It's going to involve a tap, but it's legato hammers, pulls, and it's going to be straight up six notes. So pick, hammer, hammer, pick, hammer, hammer, 9, 10, sorry, 9, 12, 15, 9, 12, 15, both strings. Then to extend it a bit, we're going to tap the 18th fret. And that extends the arpeggio to, we're going to get another F out of it, essentially. And you'll notice that once we hit the F, uh, with the tap finger, we're just descending the, the remaining notes on the string and then ascending them again. So F, D, B, G sharp, B, D. So the entire tapping portion, or legato portion, is that. Happens to also make an excellent left hand. Or I should say fretting hand thing, because if you're if you're left hand, it's gonna be your right hand. But exercise, basically like this. So when you put the two together, you end up with the big pattern, which is this. Basically like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do to continue this is we're literally going to mimic everything we just did, but we're going to move it to a new 
position. We're going to move it uh, diagonally, I'm going to say, to strings three and one. Now the beauty of this is literally everything you just learned, uh, the spacing of the fingers, uh, what's picked and what's hammered and pulled and tapped, it's all going to remain the same. All we're going to do is move it diagonally, one string and one fret. So third string we're going to have 10, 13, 16, and that's going to be the same for the first string. That's going to give you the same notes as what we had just done in the previous part. F, G sharp, B, D, F sharp again, B again, and our high note, the top note, is going to be B at the 19th fret first string. So here's part one picked. Right, just as before. And here's part two with uh, the legato phrasing. Okay, now to end it, we gotta end it somehow. We're gonna end it by extending the diminished uh, tonality one more time. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach D, which would normally be played at the 22nd fret. Instead of just hitting D, uh, I'm gonna slide into it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swoop into it by tapping one note below it. I'm gonna tap C sharp and then bend to give it a little creepiness, right? A little, a little cool little swoop. So here's the whole thing, uh, slow tempo. And there's your little cool little ending there, so.